Alright, what's going on guys? What my back at it again in here for another audio video for you guys for today. And yes, in here for my TNA lockdown review. And uh, I wasn't sure, you know, if I was going to do this or not, depending how the show went. And, uh, you know, I will say this, overall, it was better than Victory World 2011. So I will be uh, talking about some of the things I liked in this. And then, uh, you know, some of the things I didn't like about the show. Um, you know, there are a couple of matches I did like, so I will get into that uh, as well, too. Uh, but I want to thank everyone uh, for coming for the TNA Lockdown uh, preview show, which is with me, SND, and a couple others of the YWC. So I really appreciate you guys coming in. It was one hell of a show. Hopefully you guys will come back and uh, join us for the Extreme Rules preview show, uh, which will be hours before Extreme Rules, and which most likely will be around the normal time, around 3 p.m., so definitely stay tuned for that one. Alright, so for the first matchup of the night, we did have the X Division guys kicking it off here in the Lethal Lockdown match, of course. And now, uh, you know, with this one, most of the uh, X Division guys in this match, which I thought it was a good match and a good way to uh, kick off, you know, uh, Lockdown. And then uh, with this one, we see everyone involved. We see some double team moves here in this one. We see, uh, the, you know, uh, the drop kick too as well. Uh, you know, the thing I didn't like about this match is that, you know, it was treated as if it was a tag match and there was a tag elimination, so which made more, uh, which it made it more confusing, so I didn't really like that whole idea, uh, but, you know, that's what basically happened with that and how it was treated. Uh, but in the end, Max Bug does get the win on this one. I thought Suicide was get the win originally, but, you know, uh, that took me by surprise, but Max Bug is the winner of that matchup. Alright, next matchup right after that, which I thought was another good match too as well. We had Inking uh, taking on Alinda Jordan and Eric Young, the British Division, and Scott Stider and Crimson uh, in this match. And, you know, I thought this was a good tag team match. Uh, you know, with this one, uh, Eric Young really uh, treating as if this was escape only, but that wasn't the case. So, uh, even though he escaped the cage, uh, his team did not win. Uh, so, I don't know what was up with that. Uh, but anyway, we did get to see, you know, takedown here. Uh, I believe we got to see some double teams in this win. And uh, in the end with this match, uh, Inking does get the win on this one. I kind of thought the British Invasion was going to get the win. Uh, but, you know, Inking did get the win. So I'm not really uh, mad about that either. We'll just have to wait and see with that Shannon Moore's whole heel turn and how that's going to play out. But overall, that's what did happen in that match. Alright, then we get into the matchup, which I was most nervous about and, uh, you know, wanted to know how it was going to turn out. And uh, I admit, this wasn't Mickey James's best, uh, you know, matchup. But, you know, you guys got to remember that she was also injured in this match and, you know, had that whole arm injury. So, you know, the matchup didn't last, you know, that long. It was actually really short, so we didn't get to really see too much. But the Mickey DDT and the couple of things from the steel cage that Mickey did to attack uh, Madison Rain in this one. Uh, even though it wasn't her best, I'm sure once she's, you know, healed up, she will have a good run with the championship. So hopefully, uh, you know, they'll have her, um, you know, have the championship for a little while longer. But I am happy she uh, did not lose her hair in this one, thank God. And uh, she is, yes, the new Knockouts Women's Champion. So I was happy about the end result with that. Even though it was a short match, it could have been better. But, you know, I'm happy she didn't lose her hair in the end. Alright, from there we move on to the next match, which was Samoa Joe taking on the Pope, and uh, with this one, uh, you know, the storyline, I didn't really care for it too much, but the match, you know, wasn't bad either. Uh, you know, getting into this, hopefully, uh, you know, with this one, this is the last time we'll hopefully get to see Samoa Joe take on the Pope, uh, you know, in a match with each other. So with this one, uh, mainly in a way, uh, all Samoa Joe in this match, we see the rights and lefts, the enziguri here. Uh, the rake to the eyes and, you know, a whole slap exchange too, which was pretty funny. Uh, we see two muscle busters and uh, in the end, uh, Samoa Joe does get the victory, which was good on that note. So uh, hopefully this rivalry will come to an end and maybe Samoa Joe uh, get into the world title picture or something like that. Or just move on to a different storyline and do better things from here on out. So uh, that's what basically happened with that one. And yes, Joe did get the win against the Pope. Alright, so from there we move on to the next match, which is Matt Morgan taking on Hernandez in this match. And uh, with this one, I didn't really care for it, to be all honest with you guys. And, uh, you know, I was kind of, you know, bored at some points, but, 
hey what are you gonna do uh you know what we did get to see briefly you know the right hands uh you know in this match they you know elbow uh, the splash here as well as well as the cross body and the shoulder block uh, but in the end, with the carbon footprint, yes, Matt Morgan does get the defeat on Muerte Hernandez. And uh, that's what basically happened with that. So, uh, you know, I uh, you know, was pretty happy that Matt Morgan won. But in the end, I didn't really care for too much for this matchup. But hey, that's what happened in that match overall. Alright, from there, we do move on to Kurt Angle taking on Jeff Jarrett. And basically, best, uh, you know, two out of three falls matchup uh, really in the steel cage. Um, you know, with this one, this wasn't bad, um, you know, Kurt Angle, uh, you know, getting, uh, the first, uh, you know, two pinfalls won here, and, uh, in the end, Jeff Jarrett does get the win, uh, overall in the last fall, uh, but this match, you know, what we did get to see, um, you know, we get to see, you know, the figure four lock, uh, you know, epic suplex off the top rope, which almost uh, looked like uh, Kurt Angle broke his neck again, which is pretty crazy and kind of scary too, I might add too as well. Uh, you know, we saw the rear naked choke in this match. Uh, the ankle lock a couple of times too, but, uh, you know, Jeff Jarrett does come back with, I believe, which was a roll-up to get the win for the final fall. I thought he, Kurt Angle was going to win all the falls, but that was the case uh, with this match. Alright, right after that, we did move on to the world title matchup, which, you know, really, I didn't really care for, and it wasn't really that good of a match either as well. Um, you know, there wasn't really too much to talk about in this match either. Uh, we did get to see uh, the double uh, leg submission by Sting onto Mr. Anderson and RVD, which kind of looked kind of weird. Um, we did get to see, you know, the double mic check as well. We did get to see the frog splash. And for some strange odd reason, we did get to see Hulk Hogan, you know, get to interfere. He had a lead pipe. Uh, he's going to, you know, have RVD uh, hit one of the guys with it, which was really weird. Uh, you know, in the end, I guess, you know, Sting uh, was able to retain, and it looks like we might get to see Sting versus Hulk Hogan, which I really don't want to see, uh, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, I don't really see uh, why Hulk Hogan would want to face Sting anyway, so hopefully that doesn't happen, and that's what it kind of seemed like it was leading to, so yeah, that's what happened with it. Alright, for the main event, which was a good main event, we have Immortal taking a fortune in this match, and, uh, you know, this was a good way to uh, end TNA. A uh, lockdown, in my opinion, and I thought it was a good match. Uh, what we did get to see, you know, everyone get involved here, you know, close lines and double team moves. Uh, we see Christopher Daniels doing a, you know, a crazy, uh, you know, leap off the seal cage onto the floor, which is pretty epic. Uh, you know, I might uh, add with that. Uh, we see the cross bodies here as well. Uh, you know, just, you know, a couple of other stuff as well, so a lot of, you know, back and forth stuff, you know, people getting busted open, the use of the weapons. Also, we did get to see the return, that's right, the return of AJ Styles coming in this match, helping out, and, you know, Fortune with this, and Fortune, yes, does get the victory, which I believe was by... Christopher Daniels, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, uh, Fortune does get the win and takes out Immortal. And, yeah, so that's what basically came to a close with TNA Lockdown. You know, to me, I thought it was better than Victory Road. I'm not too sure if I'll be, you know, uh, checking out the next pay-per-view or not, depending on what's going on and how it's going to turn out. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, TNA Showdown might return this week also, depending on what's going on with that as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, stay tuned with that as well. Uh, also, uh, yet again, I want to thank everyone coming out for the TNA Lockdown preview show with me and SND. Hopefully, you guys, like I said, We'll be around for the next one, which will be the Extreme Rules preview show, which should be a hell of a show as well. So hopefully, guys, do not miss it. It will be, a, you know, a great show. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought on lockdown, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. And uh, that about how it does it for this audio video. And as always, I will talk to you guys later on. Peace.